Dr. Philip Lee. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, during my short contribution, I will try not to repeat again the shortcomings of the HS2 project. Uh, despite the many valid economic and environmental concerns already expressed eloquently by many colleagues, HS2 would perhaps still be quite a nice thing to have. Like most people, I prefer travelling on fast trains rather than slow ones, but spending £50 billion plus on something nice to have is just, the, is just not good enough. Public spending of this order of magnitude should be about implementing strategic priorities, and I do not believe that fast rail tops the priority list of infrastructure projects required to benefit our country's future. I would place new energy generation, such as nuclear reactors, super-fast broadband for all, as the South Koreans currently enjoy, a new national hub airport, a fast train connecting Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds and Hull, and a fleet of new regional acute hospitals with supported community hospitals. All of these I would put ahead of fast rail, and I believe that the majority of the British public would agree with me. Any one of the concerns expressed by colleagues, especially my right, right honourable friend, the member for Chesham Amersham, would be reason enough to not spend our resources on HS2. And yes, it is resources because it's not just the money, but it's also the combined efforts of a large number of people and natural resources we ought to treasure. But none of these reasons gets close to why I cannot support this rail project. I cannot support it because it takes our country in the wrong direction. Quite simply, HS2 is a project of the past and not of the future. It is the wrong plan at the wrong time. It will probably contribute to the country's problems rather than solve any of them. More debt, a blighted local environment along the path of the track, and no likely return in an increasingly global economy depends upon data transfer, not the transfer, transport of people. To be blunt, we will not be getting the returns that taxpayers deserve on their investment. Our national priorities should be about a vision which rockets us into a more competitive world, not about chugging along as we are, albeit ten minutes faster between London and Birmingham. Is it truly ambitious of us to want to be the France of 1970s or Japan of the 1960s? Our country's infrastructure spending should be about delivering the new paradigm shifts that have always given our country the edge, such as delivering inspiring world-leading technology and innovation such as maybe a train like the Japanese have promised between Tokyo and Nagoya that will be travelling at 600 kilometres per hour, a proper high-speed rail, or perhaps building on what we could have been, which could, could be globally transformative laser technology, new aircraft engines that could get us to Australia in four hours, new craft to explore the richly resourced ocean bed that we know so little about, and to push back frontiers and space, an environment in which real future economic opportunities exist already for British industry. For I believe that the future will be about the fast transmission of data, not people. With recent information technology developments such as 3D printing, securing an economic future for Britain will be more about the capacity for data transmission, not the capacity to transport people. We will all be manufacturers in the future. Manufacturing will not be taking place far away. Government strategies should be about reducing people's need to make rail journeys. Improving broadband is one way of achieving this. The widespread installation of fibre optic cabling, the increased use of satellite broadband technology to serve more rural areas, and more extensive 4G would allow people to spend a longer period of time at home. Of course, I will give way. The most grateful honourable friend is giving way. Would not agree with me that the strength the arguments he is making come from the fact that his constituency will neither benefit from it from HS2 nor indeed will even disbenefit from it. He's making a straightforward economic argument against HS2 for very good reasons. Um, I, I thank my honourable friend for his intervention. Yes, I, I don't have any direct uh, relationship with with, uh, with HS2, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that I've been elected to a national parliament, and when something affects my country, I should pass comment. Um, we are aware of the realities of the future: the need to reduce our dependency on energy, the need to look after our elderly relatives. I suspect we won't be living so far apart from the extended members of our family in the future. And I think, I think that's where I will come to a close, really, on this. I, I, I must say I've spent the entire afternoon baffled by the contributions of many of my colleagues on both sides of the House. Um, I don't see a future of people travelling more domestically. I see a future of the travel of the travelling less. In the 2030s and the 2040s, when this uh, project comes to fruition, I suspect we will be travelling less domestically. We need to travel more internationally, which is why I would place a hub airport in front of fast rail. I'm no NIMBY, as, as my honourable friend has pointed out. I've been loyal to the, uh, to the Conservative Party Manifesto 2010 since election. 
and I have no intention of voting against anything in that manifesto this evening. So I will be abstaining as a point of principle. HS2 won't get this country to the destination I want to see for it. Our resources should be better spent elsewhere. I can't support this project. Yeah.